Hey, we're live. We looked at Pythagoras and what I said, first of all, the equation Pythagoras, the one that we usually remember, Sam, because it's alphabetical, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What it really is is short side plus short side squared squared equals long side squared. That gives us a nice shortcut. It means that if, I'll probably, this is a nice one to give you on a test in the future as well. This means they can give me three sides of a triangle and they can ask me, is it a right triangle or not? What they're really saying, Natasha, is does Pythagoras work or not? In other words, which of the following side lengths could be used to form a right triangle? The only way that A could be a right triangle is if short side squared plus short side squared equals long side squared. What's the long side here? So here's what we're saying, Tanner. Does 1 squared plus 3 squared equal 5 squared? And my way of making that a question is I put a question mark above the equal sign. That's my way of saying, Cheyenne, are those equal to each other? If it is, if they are, then that is a right triangle. If they're not, then I know that that triangle can't have a right angle. And Tatiana, I didn't have to draw the stupid thing. So it's a nice time saver. What is 5 squared? I can do the right-hand side in my head, I hope. What's 1 squared? What's 3 squared? Does 1 plus 9 equal 25, question mark? No. Is this a right-angle triangle then? Can't possibly be, and we just proved it because it doesn't fit Pythagoras. One of the reasons Pythagoras is one of the oldest mathematical formulas out there, it's flexible. You can use it to be clever for all sorts of stuff. No. Is B a right angle triangle? Well, if it is, then short side squared plus short side squared equals long side squared. What's the long side in B? Yeah, and I'm going to assume you can find that no matter what order I give you the sides in, that you could spot the longest side. So, Tanner, if this is a right angle triangle, 7 squared plus 8 squared, does that equal 9 squared, question mark? What's 9 squared? What's 7 squared? What's 8 squared? Does 49 plus 64 equal 81? I don't even think I actually need to do the math because uh, 4 and 6, 40 and 60, that's 100. It's already bigger than 81. So you know what? Not a right angle triangle. Okay. You better get perfect on this test. Okay. C. If that's a right angle triangle, then the short side squared plus the short side squared should equal the long side squared. Does it? Emma, what's the long side in C? Okay, so 25 squared equals question mark. Are they the same? That's my abbreviation for it. Do they equal each other? Uh, 7 squared plus 24 squared. This one I'm a little more suspicious of because I don't know the answers to these numbers in my head. 25 squared, I know, that's 625. 7 squared, I know, that's 49. But I do not know what 24 squared is. I know it ends in a 6, I think. 576. Does 49 plus 576 equal 625? Yeah, you know what that means? That means that this is a right angle triangle. In fact, we have a special name for that. We call this a Pythagorean triplet three numbers that fit Pythagoras. We call them Pythagorean triplets. I'm not going to ask you to memorize that. The nerd within me says. Is that okay? Try the last one on your own. Is that a Pythagorean triangle? Is it a right angle triangle or not? And can I find out without drawing it? Tatiana, what's the long side here? So 50 squared, is that the same as short side squared plus short side squared? 
Is it? That's what I'm saying. There, I got you to open your calculator. I knew I could. 5 times 5 is 25, so 50 times 50 is going to be uh, 2,500. That I can do. 3 times 3 is 9, so 30 times 30 is 900. 4 times 4 is 16, 40 times 40 is 1,600. What do you think, Nikki? Is that a right angle triangle? It is. And I like this, Nikki, because it's a nice shortcut to try and draw that and prove that and bring out a protractor and measure it. Forget it. I can do it in two lines. Okay. Do you all have some room at the bottom of your page right now? Yes? Make right. You know what? I can type, actually, Mr. Duick. Click right here. Right. Andy Kent. And I'd like you to draw your best attempt at a circle. I'm going to cheat because my best attempt at a circle is like you know, Tanner's best attempt at combing his hair. No, just no. Is that a circle for you guys? Does that look circular on your screen? Okay. On my screen it doesn't, but that's because the projector is a different resolution. If you ever have a circle in your diagram, if you ever have a circle in your diagram, I like you to. Oh, you know what I'm going to do today? Because the recorder is still running, anyways. I just thought of this. To help me patrol and roam. Oh, yeah. Let's take advantage of this. Here we go. I can wander around now. Maybe I'll stand back there. Actually, I'm going to sit right here for now. Um, draw a line right from the middle to the edge, like that. What do you call that line? A line from dead center to the edge. OK. Draw another line, like that. What can you tell me about those two lines? in terms of their length compared to Tanner. They are the same. Tanner, anytime, and starting today, you're going to notice in the assignment there's going to be circles. If you ever see a circle and you see a radius, I always say, hey, I'll put double hash marks on or triple hash marks or something to remind myself that they're the same size. Because that often means that you'll have isosceles triangles or maybe even an equilateral triangle or something like that. So the handy hint is this. If there is a circle, all the plural of radius is radii, so all radii, which is radiuses. Are equal. Okay. Sometime today, I guarantee in your diagrams, you're going to see some circles and you're going to be going, hey, wait a minute, I can't figure this out. And I'm going to say to you, I bet you if you put hash marks on all the radii, I bet you suddenly there's going to be an isosceles triangle that you haven't spotted yet. And if it's an isosceles and you know two angles are the same, and then suddenly it starts to fall apart. Turn the page. So we said this. It's fine. Turn the page. Quadrilaterals. What's a quadrilateral? It's a four-sided shape. Ashley, what every triangle add to? 180. You know what every quadrilateral adds to? The sum of the angles in a quadrilateral is 360. And this is kind of a cool proof. I can prove this to you. I can show you why this is. I've drawn a generic, a generic quadrilateral. Any four-sided shape. Put a big dot somewhere near the middle. How about right about there? I'm a little off-center. Who cares? And once you've done that, connect that dot to all four corners like this.
can use a ruler if you want to be neat, or you can freehand. Pardon me? Uh, technically, no. A kite is actually, right, is actually a ge geometry shape, and we named it a kite, but these two would have to be the same length. They'd have to have hash marks, and since they don't, I can't assume they're, a sa they're the same length. But for what it's worth, it is actually a geometry shape. Here's what I want you to notice. By connecting those lines, you've created a bunch of triangles. Yes? How many? I'm going to say this. Every single quadrilateral, if you put a dot in the middle and connect the lines, is four triangles. By the way, what's my abbreviation called for triangles? That little triangle symbol. You know what my abbreviation for quadrilaterals is? A little four-sided shape. You know what abbreviation for circles is going to be? A little tiny circle. Okay. Nicole, you okay with that? Now, four triangles, that means four of those. If I add up this angle plus 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 this angle, it's going to be four triangles. It's going to be four times 180. Except, I don't want to include those angles there. Because if I'm trying to add up the outside angles, I don't want the middle angles. Wait a minute. How many degrees is that right there? Can you go 4 times 180 minus 360 on your calculator? What do you get? What? Every four-sided shape has to add to 360 because in any four-sided shape, it really is four triangles, but subtract that middle circle because we don't want that in our question. Special proof. No numbers. It's one of the few completely visual proofs that was done already about 2,000 years ago. Somebody noticed this and said, hey, I don't need to do numbers. I can just connect the dots. Four-sided shapes. First one is a trapezoid. What's a trapezoid? A trapezoid has two Parallel sides. Cool. What's my abbreviation for parallel? How about two parallel lines? Okay. Feel free to use that because spelling parallel, you always get the number of L's and R's wrong anyways. A trapezoid has actually it's at least two parallel sides. This is a trapezoid here. Okay. Um. What do angle 1 and 2 add to? Why? These two guys form a straight line? What letter is that? Okay, this is that This is that interior angles I ought to, on the same side of the transversal, or we also call that co-interior. By the way, Tanner, you're on a roll. What do angle 3 and 4 add to? And what do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 add to, Tanner? There's your 360. Okay. If you have a trapezoid, Nikki, if you know one angle, you can almost always find the rest. These two add to 180, and those two add to 180. How can I spot a trapezoid? Two parallel sides. There's going to be some trapezoids in your homework today. Sesame Street is brought to you today by the trapezoid, and turn the page. Should open some windows. Should open some windows. Paul, could you open that window there? David, could you open that window there? Can you reach it? Paul, you're too short. You can reach. Rotate it counterclockwise, up and left. There you go. And then give it a little push. Perfect. Here, Paul. Stick. Okay. Let's do that. Tanner's getting sleepy. We wouldn't want that. Adrian's getting sleepy. We wouldn't want that. Of course, you could always take the hoodie off. Just me thinking. Adrian, my friend, what's the next shape we're looking at right now? Shape B. Can you read this word out to me, please? Parallelogram. A parallelogram has two parallel sides. 
which actually also means technically it's also a trapezoid because if it has two parallel sides, does it have at least one parallel side? All parallelograms are technically trapezoids. Um, this also means that the opposite sides have the same length. So if they tell you it's a parallelogram, you know that this side and this side have the same length, and this side and this side have the same length. So I could show that. Let's see, we show parallel with arrows, we show length with hash marks. How about one hash mark on the top and bottom, Nicole? Two hash marks on the left and right. Hey, what do these two angles, one and two, add to? Convince me. It's that I ought sought thing. It's an upside down flipped one. But yeah, it's interior angles on the same side of the transversal or co interior. Interior angles on the same side of the transversal. They equal 180 degrees. You know what angles 3 and 4 add to, Tanner? You know what angles 1 and 2 add to? Sorry, sorry. you know what angles 1 and 3 add to? Turns out, in a parallelogram, any consecutive angles, any angles that are side by side, add to 180. Because, Natasha, there's also a C there. See it? There's also a C there. Upside down and twisted, see it? And there's also a backwards letter C there. All of those add to 180. Now you ready? Here's the reasoning, Alexis. If 1 plus 2 equals 180 and 1 plus 3 equals 180, doesn't that mean that those two angles are the same? Yep. In fact, as it turns out, in a parallelogram, we say that Diagonal angles in a parallelogram are equal. That D doesn't look like much of a D. It looks like an E. Let's try that again. 3 and 2 are the same size. 1 and 4 are the same size. Okay. Speaking of diagonal angles, let's connect the corners. On this shape down here, with freehand or with the ruler, connect them. We're getting to your kite, Natasha, but not for a bit yet. If we connect the corners, if you connect the corners of any quadrilateral, we call these diagonals. And as it turns out, if you have a parallelogram, if you have a parallelogram, the diagonals, here's your new word of the day, bisect each other. What does bisect mean? Anybody know? What does bisect mean? Uh, more than cross, it means cuts exactly in half. In other words, watch. This length and this length are the same size. This length and this length are the same size. If you know one, you know the other. Okay. If you know one, you know the other. So there's our parallelogram. We've done a trapezoid, we've done a parallelogram. Now we're going to look at a special parallelogram. A rectangle. A rectangle. Tanner, a rectangle is a parallelogram, except we add one more quality, Chelsea. All the angles have to be right angles. Nicole, what's the symbol for right angle? That little, this thing here. That says those are right angles. 
Now, because it's a parallelogram, that means all the stuff I just talked about applies. And in a rectangle, the opposite sides are... Come here, Mr. Duick. Try that again. Equal to each other. Why is the pen not working? There we go. Pen misbehaving. Come on, Mr. D. The opposite sides... That's supposed to say equal. Okay, you're frustrating me, Pen. Let's plug back in, go back with power. Maybe that's the issue. The battery might be getting low. Mm -hmm. Try this again. Equal and Cole, what's that an abbreviation for? Yeah. How big is each angle in a rectangle? How big's that angle? Ninety. And the diagonals bisect each other just like a parallelogram. Which means that This one is the same as this one, and this one is the same as this one. Actually, no. It means that all four of these are the same length. This is a little isosceles triangle. 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 And the very last one. And then we're done for today. The rhombus. This is a special type of a parallelogram. It's a parallelogram with four equal sides. Is it the last one? Yes, it is. So a rhombus is a parallelogram, which means all the parallelogram stuff applies. But this is the one that has a whole bunch of things. Are you ready? In addition, the diagonals bisect. What did the word bisect mean? Cuts exactly in half. <coughs> So that means, Nicole, that this length is the same as that length, and this length is the same as that length. Cuts exactly in half. Not only that, the diagonals form a right angle. Tanner, that means that this angle right here is 90 degrees. How big is this angle right here? How big is this angle right here? How big is this angle right here? Do you think Pythagoras might rear its ugly head? Because now there's right angle triangles kicking around all over the place too. And then there's one more. The diagonals bisect the interior, what's that an abbreviation for? Angles of the rhombus. And what does that mean? Once you've written that down, look up. It means that this angle and this angle are the same size. This angle and this angle are the same size. This angle and this angle, those are check marks, are the same size. This angle and this angle are the same size. Really, it means if you know just one of these, suddenly all the rest of them fall apart. Okay? Here is your handy dandy reference sheet for quadrilaterals on the back of this page. So when you're doing the homework today, you probably want to keep the back of lesson two out. That has all of the triangle stuff, and it has all of the parallel line, bangle, zangle stuff. But quadrilaterals, here they all are. And what's your homework? All of geometry package one, but you can skip on page S7, number 7 and 8, and you can skip all of page S13. Now, when I say homework, the rest of this class I'm going to give you next class to work on it. We're going to mark the take-home quiz next class. I'm also going to give you next class to work on your mathematical investigations. That's Monday. When are your mathematical investigations due? Which is when? Next week, Friday. So a week and two days from today. Is that all right? Make sense? Pardon me? Couldn't care less. I'm talking to the whole class right now. Any questions at all? Believe it or not, 
That's most of the geometry stuff. I got a few more things to show you, but we're going to press pause for a while and let this percolate. Then we're going to start to look at trying to prove things, because remember we said that we want to go from inductive reasoning, finding patterns, to deductive reasoning, making proofs. What time is it? 1.30. You've got 45 minutes to work on the geometry package, or you can work on the take-home, please, or you can work on your investigations. I already checked lessons one and two last day. If you didn't have lessons one and two done last day and you want to show them to me today, that's all good as well. The remainder of the class is yours. I'm going to go...